Hello and welcome. You guys sure know how to find me when you guys have questions. And looks like my video about time series forecasting using DAX did generate a bunch of fair amount of questions. So I decided that instead of responding to each individual LinkedIn request or direct email or comment on this video, I will just record a quick video with all of the answers. So the question number one, what is this visual that I use to break down different components of the time series. As you know, this visual shows us several swim lanes. It shows us the time series data itself. It shows the seasonality. And then it shows us the trend. So how does this work? Well, it turns out a long time ago, you could go to App Source and find what they used to be called R visuals. And that's exactly what it is. It was an R visual, a visual written in R that Microsoft used to offer, and out of the box it provided this really cool functionality. Today, if you wanna do this yourself, you have to write R. So some of you guys contacted me and said, hey, can you please share the R code? Well, I do have R code, but why don't you take it from the horse's mouth? And I found this um, code on Microsoft's GitHub, and then I will post the link in the description of this video where you could go and take a look at all of the R magic that Microsoft used to build that visual. Unfortunately, I cannot find a way to get that visual anyway. So if you go to assets here, you could get the PBIX file. There's a bunch of stuff in here, but I'm not seeing the visual itself uh, so that you could download and load and sideload it into your dashboard. However, the script.r file does have all of the pieces necessary to rebuild the logic. Now, this is super sophisticated. In many cases, you could go and write something that's much simpler. But if you have our expertise, this will definitely get you going. Now, the next set of questions mainly focus on this measure that we wrote that's called sales forecast trend. A bunch of questions. For example, where does slope one come from, intercept? And then also, why are we looking at this week's count um, component of this calculation. So let's, why don't we take a look at this calculation overall and just walk through it step by step and try to make sense of it. The first thing that you will notice is that the editor, for some reason, does not like the slope one intercept measures or columns that I'm using in this calculation. So uh, this is some kind of limitations with the editor itself. Uh, I'm using the June version of the Power BI desktop I do have a July version installed on another laptop, but actually that issue is not fixed. So even though this compiles just fine and calculation works just fine, for whatever reason, the editor still thinks and cannot understand where this comes from. So for now, you could just ignore that underlying thing. And then once we look and start going through the code, you will see where these columns come from and why we're using them the way we are. Now, my assumption is that you already saw the first video so we understand high level how the model is structured, what the date dimension looks like. So I'm gonna skip those details. You can go and watch the original video. I will put the link to the video in the description of this one. So now let's just go step by step and try to understand how it works and what it's supposed to be doing. So as, as we can see, so I'm just using this DAX query view window to try to analyze our code. So basically what I did, I just took my measure, pasted it right in here, made a couple of changes just so that it doesn't break, and we're gonna go one step by step to figure out what's going on. So the first thing that we're doing is we're trying to figure out what year is the current year. And the way we define it is, what is the max year that we can see in our visual? If I go back to my report and I look at this chart, so this is the chart that uses the default forecasting capability of the trend charts or line charts in Power BI, and this chart uses the measure that I created, and you can see they're very similar. But in this case, because it's a measure, you have a lot of control over it. You can put it in any other visual. So that's the preferred approach, at least as far as I'm concerned. The question is, uh, what's the current year? And the way this logic will work is it's gonna look at whatever time period I could see in the dashboard, and it's gonna figure out that right now I'm looking at 2017. So that's what that first line does. So now I know what my current year is, I'm gonna try to figure out what are my prior years. And prior years, what that will do is, I'm gonna need this information 
Uh, right now, we're going to do everything at a week grain. And if you want to do it at a month grain or some other grain, you just have to adjust the calculation logic accordingly. As far as this logic is concerned, we're doing seasonality at a week level. So what I want to do is I want to do all of the permutations of year and weeks uh, in my day table. So if I take this table and I just display it, then what I get is I get a table of all of the weeks by year. So I should get 104 hopefully rows or something like this because this is uh, a customer that has 53 weeks for some years. So basically now I have a column for year and column for week, right? I'm sorting it by year by week. And all I do is I just I just start with, with this table so that I can start enhancing it with additional data enrichment. So now that I have a list of year and, and, and weeks, the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to add revenue to it. And then I'm going to filter it just so that I see all of the weeks here that are already populated with revenue. So basically only show me the actuals. And why do I do this? Let's run this and then we'll take a look and try to understand what the logic is behind this. So I now um, I've, just add, I've just taken my, call, my table with uh, weeks and years, I added revenue and I filtered for non-blank revenue, right? So now I have, if we look at this table now, and so I unfortunately I cannot enlarge the table itself, I can only make this font here larger. So what I get is I get a table now only for rows that are populated. So I have a week one through 52, 53 populated for 2016 and 10 weeks populated for 2017. So the first question is, why are we only looking at 17 and 16 if in our report we have many more years? And this is where the first kind of philosophical point of the calculation is. So we're trying to calculate the trend. And if I have a lot of years in my chart, then if I have my trend, so, you know, if I have a good year, bad year, good year again, you know, we're not trying to figure out, it's, it's hard to un understand which trend of which year we're trying to catch. So by me saying, let's just go to the last year, what I'm saying is ignore this is the trend from the prior years, just take a look at the current year and the prior year, right? So it's only gonna look at starting somewhere here. So from if I just look from January 16 all the way through, 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 you know, whatever week 10 of 17 is, we see there is some sort of growth, hopefully. So I'm going to catch that trend and not the trend from 15 all the way through 17. So you have an option. And the way you do this is here you can specify how far back you want to go in order to calculate your trend. Uh, and the other thing which you might do is you might want to decide, do you want to use the trend from the existing year in your factor that into your trend calculation or not. If you just want to use the trend from the prior year, then you say where that year is equal to current year minus one. I said, hey, let me take a look at prior year and however few weeks from the current year, in which case I say greater than or uh, equal to current year minus one. So this year, this way, my trend will be prior year plus current year. So here by pl by playing around with this line here in this calculation, you could decide how far back you want to go. Do you want to include current year? Do you want to exclude the current year? So that, that magic happens here. Once you figured out how far back you want to go for the trend, then you want to find all of the relevant data points. And that's what this gives me. And now you can start figuring out the slope and intercept. Now, just to remind you, what are we trying to do? Because we're trying to calculate the trend, trend will be represented by a straight line. And line has a very specific equation. And that equation is, of course, I messed up a little bit. Y is equal to slope times X plus intercept. So in order for us to calculate our line, we need to know what our slope is, what our intercept is. And then if I pass the, the weak number for X, I should be able to predict what my Y or revenue will be. So how does this work? The way this works is we're using this function called line EST line. And what that will do is it will look at this table, weekly data, which is the table that we see here. And it's going to use revenue and week column, which is this column and this column to try to figure out how to calculate the, the slope. 
So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to paste the, the table name in my evaluate statement and uh, we're not going to order it by anything. So let me comment that out. And if I run it, you see that this function, so the function line generates a table back. So in that table, we have a bunch of different columns. So this video is not going to go deep into how the function works. There's a bunch of videos out there on how the function works, or you can just look up the documentation. It's very well documented. What's important is for our calculation is giving me the slope. Now, for whatever reason, they're calling it slope one. Maybe it's a reserved keyword and it's giving me the intercept. Then we have a bunch of other columns in here that they're telling me the quality of the prediction. Obviously, you know, the way these functions work, they will always return some slope and intercept, but you'd have to take a look at other uh, columns in the, in the table that it returns to, to, to get a good idea of whether that line is good or not good, how tight the dots are, uh, that are potentially forming a line or is it pre pretty much random. So by looking at the rest of these columns, you can get a pretty good idea of how good of the quality um, of a prediction that function produces. So now that I have run the, I've, I've run this line, line STX function and that produces this table, that table lives in a table that I call stats. So now because I have the stats table, I can get my slope and I can get my intercept. As you're debugging this, you should be able to get to the point where literally you could take this code and go line by line just like I do, and you should be able to here in Evaluate just paste that stats table, and then you should be able to see the results of it, right? So if you're not able to get there, uh, then something is wrong. But basically, uh, so far, we just have three tables. Table number one gives me all the dates. Table number two adds revenue to the dates and removes the dates that don't have any revenue. And then I run the line through that second table that I called weekly data, right? And then that gives me the two columns, slope and intercept that I need for my, um, to, to draw my line using this formula. Now, what I need to do is I just need to write the value of slope in one variable, value of intercept in another variable, and the way this works is I just use two, there's many ways to do this. Again, this is just a table. So whichever way you want to get to that value is fine. So you could use max x function and you just pass the table, which is this table. You pass the column name that you're trying to get to and max x will just find the max. So basically um, we only have one row, so it'll just you know find that value. Or you can use the select columns function that works in a very similar way but basically it'll just extract this, right? So now when that is done, now you have the slope and the intercept of the function. The next question is, what is my x? And that's where I think I messed up. So maybe let's try to fix this together. So basically the way I assumed is that when we do weeks count, that's gonna give me how many weeks of data do I have? And then the question is, what is my x, right? So when in my in my report, if you look at how this chart is done, I'm passing a week start date, and a week start date will have a week number attached to it, right? So here, if I mouse over, you will see that my week is 10, right? So I have data for week number 10, and if I traverse back, then you can see how this number changes, and then it goes back to 52, 51, blah, 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 right? So this is just a numeric uh, week number. So where I think I have a slight miscalculation and you guys will need to fix, or if I have time, I'll fix it right now. Um, logic is the following. So when I have a week number, I want to start, I want to add all of the prior weeks and then uh, adjust my starting point for all of the prior weeks. So if I pass one to this function, I'm not starting on week one, I'm starting plus on all of the weeks from prior year, plus all of the weeks from current year that have data and then plus whatever the plus one, right? So the way I, and I think I'm pretty sure this is a bug, what I've done is I'm saying, hey, just add the week count or number of, number of data points at the week level prior to the current week so that I'm, so that I'm starting at the higher value, right? But I don't think this is, wor this is gonna work very well because if I'm at week 20, right? So I have 52 weeks for the current year and I have 19, from the, sorry, 52 weeks from the prior year, 19 from the current year, 
And if I'm on week 20 there, what I want to do is 52 plus 19 plus 1. So technically, the way this should be, this should work is I should just have 52 here, right? And what this will do is it's going to say, okay, take all of the weeks from the prior year and then start with the new year, right? So don't look at all of the actuals for this year. So now if I'm in week 10, it's, it's going to start me at a data point of 50, 62, right? If I'm at week one, it's going to start me at a data point 53, right? Because I'm running the line from the, from the beginning of my data set, which is going to be week one of 2016 in our case. And if I'm trying to do analysis for 17, I'm not starting at one. I'm starting at 53, 54, something like this, right? So the right calculation should be um, slope times week plus 52 plus intercept. So I'm not a fan of 52. Basically, you'd want to clean it up and make sure that, you know, you're just looking at number of weeks in the prior year, right? So it should be 52, but, you know, depending on how your data is laid out, could be. So this is a little sloppy, but for the purposes of this video, I think it'll, it's going to answer the questions um, that you guys have asked. Basically, why are we not starting from, from the week number? Why are we need to add something to it? So hopefully, uh, I, uh, I did a pretty good job explaining why why we need to add the history because we're not starting week because the way week number is generated it gets repeated every year right so instead of starting one two three one two three one two three we want to bump it up by a number of weeks in the prior year so hopefully that answered all of the questions that you guys had about how to do a trend calculation and time series analysis index using Power BI my next one is going to be a little bit more complicated because we're going to be tackling multivariate regression using DEX and Power BI. So that's going to be super fun. I didn't expect the time series analysis is going to be so interesting and we're going to get so many clicks and so many views. So that's awesome. So we're going to get it even more interesting and more sophisticated. So I'm looking forward to share this, uh, this, this logic with you in a subsequent video.